three. Uh, to me, what what uh, you know stands out when I when I see you guys what you're doing in pre-calculus and how it blends pretty seamlessly into calculus is all those trig identities that you struggle with. So in in, in algebra two, you you kind of learn you know you learn to deal with variables and you learn to deal with functions. Uh, you know, and you learn things like the Pythagorean theorem and, and you know, how to kind of put variables in with Pythagorean theorem and things like that. In pre-calculus, you add another level of abstraction to that, and instead of dealing with variables, you're dealing with, so this is pre-calculus, you're dealing with variables treated, um, or rather I should say trig functions treated as variables. So suddenly you've got equations with trig functions in them, and you know, we're used to think, you know, if I have x squared plus, you know, uh, bx plus c uh, equals zero, you can figure out what x is, right? We'll put an a in front of that. You can figure out what x is. And now, in pre-calculus, you're doing that, but instead of x, you have, you know, sine x or sine squared x, right? So you're actually doing this right now in, you know, solving those triangles and trying to figure out what the angle is, right? The, the uh, law of, law of, cosines when you've got the ambiguous triangle, right? So you've got, all of a sudden, you've got a, a, a quadratic equation that instead of having x's in it, has trig functions in it. So what that is doing is, it's getting you to calculus where you're, you know, you're going to combine all of that stuff together. So it's, it, it, it's, pre-calculus is very difficult because you have to think of a function, what you used to think of as a variable. So that's a very n interesting and amazing transition that your brain has to make, you know, to, to become more and more abstract. And, uh, and then in calculus, we, it's not, I mean, calculus is mostly algebra, but you're, you know, we're dealing with uh, uh, probably 95% algebra, but every once in a while we throw in this idea of a limit or what happens as something gets incredibly small or incredibly big. And then we add in to that, you know, so we're letting things get infinitely small, which is, and really what happens is the numerator is getting infinitely small and the denominator is getting infinitely small. So, you know, we take some weird function like this. So all your abstraction is building up to you can handle, you know, things that are very, very, you know, weird looking. But once you can, you know, handle, solve an equation like this, then solving and you know figuring out what's going on with this is a little bit easier. Um, the tricky thing in calculus, of course, is that both of these things are are going to zero. So you've got a numerator and a denominator that are both getting infinitely small. And how do you you know how do you handle that? And of course, all we know is that you can't. You know, you can never divide by zero. So Newton figured out a way that if the numerator and the denominator are both getting infinitely small, you're not really dividing by zero. So he figured out a way to handle that. So what you're learning in pre-calculus is going to allow you, this is not going to seem quite so strange if you're used to thinking about, you know, abstract things like instead of variables, variables are abstract, right? But when you make a trig function, a tan or a sine or a cosine into a variable, that's more another layer of abstraction. What we do in calculus is we, we add a couple of different things. We take, um, you know, things, uh, we divide by zero, or it seems like we're dividing by zero. And then we also, we take, you know, a, a trig function, we put it in there, you know. So you have, well, what happens when you have sine of x plus h minus sine of x? And, you know, we divide that by h. So we, you know, we just stick, we stick those trig functions that you're slowly getting to be comfortable with, we stick those into other really weird situations. So every day when you think about, you know, something with a trig function, it's going to make calculus a little bit easier. All the identities, all the identities that you're learning in pre-calculus, you're going to be expected to know in calculus. And we all know that you don't really know them 100%, but, you know, you've at least seen them, and it takes me, you know, five minutes of talking about it instead of half hour of talking about it because you've been thinking about it this year. We also, the vector stuff is also incredibly cool because that, you know, that we do in physics. So if we have a, you know, we have a force in that direction and a, and a torque in this direction, I'm sorry, a force in this direction and a radius in that direction, 
you can figure out you know, what happens when you multiply vectors and where you, where you actually end up. So the stuff you're learning about vectors we use in physics. And of course it also, in your third semester of calculus, what they're going to do is they're going to take vectors and they're going to start doing calculus on vectors. So it's really, uh, you know, this is a neat course. Pre-calculus is a perfect stepping stone to a whole bunch of different higher level thinking skills. So put some time, put some effort into this, ask lots of questions, and it's, uh, it's definitely worthwhile. Questions about that? Anything? You guys, what do you think? Calculus questions? Physics questions? Pre-calculus questions? It all kind of fits together. Alex? At what, at what point in calculus do we get to deal with infinity? So the very first day. Well, yeah, the first day. First week. So right here is dealing with infinity. A H is going to get infinitely small. So this is a limit. We say it's a limit as H goes to zero. So notice the numerator is becoming closer and closer to zero. The denominator is clo becoming closer and closer to zero. So how do you possibly, you know, conceptualize? How do you come up with an answer here to, you know, some, you know, something very small divided by another something very small? And it turns out there's lots of, you know, very clever. It's taken about 400 years, but there's, you know, humans are incredibly clever and have come up with, you know, really amazing. Uh, ways to deal with that. So yeah, Alex, the very first day we do that. It's, it's, very, it's very cool. Any other questions about, uh, and you know, the, the amazing thing, 